Welcome back into the Pig Trail Show. Another week, another Hog Hoops report with Kevin McPherson. I'm Jacob Morris. And Kevin, you cannot paint a bigger week for Arkansas basketball. John Calipari introduced as Arkansas's 14th head men's basketball coach. I don't know about you, that still feels very odd for me to say, but Arkansas puts on a great showing in terms of introducing him in front of all the fans. He speaks to the media for the first time. What were your big takeaways from an incredible day for Arkansas men's basketball? Yeah, I was coming out of the weekend that this hire was going to happen. It just gained more and more steam and momentum till you got till midweek and you knew that it was really just a formality at that point. And it was Wednesday when he was formally uh, named the head coach officially Wednesday morning. And as you got to the day, he flies in, arrives in Drake Field to a lot of fanfare. And then in the e early evening, you know, he has a ceremony at Bud Walton Arena, which he talked about it in his first press conference. Uh, so this is the biggest hire in Arkansas Razorbacks athletics history. So when we talk about big seasons or big games, historic, you know, events in the program history, we really haven't talked about a hire like we are this one. There's been some big hires. You know, Bobby Petrino is head coach in football uh, coming out of the NFL ranks and what he had done at Louisville. There have been some other big hires. And then coaches going to have Hall of Fame careers after coming in from mid-major level in basketball like Eddie Sutton, Nolan Richardson, even, even Eric Mosselman, who had really big success in three consecutive seasons out of his five before moving on to USC and, and, and creating this vacancy. But in terms of bringing in a, a sitting all, already anointed Naismith Hall of Fame coach who was uh, inducted nearly a decade ago, it, it, it has huge significance. And just like everything else with Cal, Cal Perry, people with his kind of fame and, and gravitas He's one of those household names, even if you're not necessarily more than a casual sports fan, because he's just that well-known. He's the greatest recruiter of all time. He has a big history going all the way back to the 90s at UMass, then in the 2000s at Memphis, and of course the last, last 15 years at Kentucky in the SEC, of going head-to-head -head against Arkansas teams, including some of the best teams in program history. So there's all kinds of storylines here, uh, but I think it's, again, the biggest splash hire of all time. The recruiting, what we, which is what we need to talk about next, Jacob, is the first thing you think about. Again, this guy to me, he was an innovator in how he recruits, the one-and-done era. And what we see now with free agency and the transfer portal and players getting paid through NIL, it's more and more like the pro game. And here was a guy that treated his program, going back even to Memphis, as sort of a turnstile farm system for coming out of high school, that one-year layover before you can be eligible for the NBA draft. And so I think... Uh, he's been an innovator in that in that sense, and I think Arkansas immediately raises its game probably to the highest it has ever been in, in, in program history in terms of recruiting in basketball. Arkansas is going to be relevant for multiple five stars every year, and I think that'll be the case here very soon as we need to talk some recruiting. Absolutely. Let's talk recruiting. I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head with that quote, right? The greatest recruiter this this uh, this sport has ever seen. And I think if you want evidence of that, right, depending on where you look, Arkansas everywhere is top 15 in the country nationally for national championship odds. And right now there's not a player on the roster. That's because of how talented of a recruiter John Calipari is. And you said it, we got to talk about it. He doesn't have some work to do. He has all of the work to do to fill out this roster. What are you hearing? And what is he kind of looking to do here to shape together the 24, 25 hogs really from nothing. And who better to turn to with an empty roster and really, when you start talking about players moving in and onto campus, it's next month. You got zero in scholarships. You got a few hogs that are hanging out in the portal. We'll see what happens there. But I'm going to go, I'm going to start with the high school stars because that's where Calipari's been a star. Six players either committed or signed to Kentucky. Half of those have already either decommitted, got granted release from National Letter of Intent, or requested that. And two of those are five stars. So let's start off with Carter Knox who didn't, hadn't signed yet, just committed to Kentucky back in March. So hadn't signed a letter of intent, has already decommitted. Uh, he's a 6'6 wing, explosive young man that started out at Tampa, Florida Catholic High School, played the last season at Overtime Elite down in Atlanta. Uh, just an, an electric scorer, very athletic, uh, great slasher, fearless to get into the cup and, and dunking, can play in the mid post, emerging three-point shot, was a McDonald's All-American this last year in the McDonald's game. Only, I think he only played 12 minutes, but had nine points, four of six from the field, one of one from three. 
Uh, but again, one of those alpha type mentality guys, super athletic, strong and fearless. Uh, but he's off. He's he's decommitted. And I think he's somebody that Arkansas is going to be in great shape with his teammate at overtime elite. Another player that was not only committed, but signed with Kentucky. He's already been granted his release national top 50. ESPN has him ranked as the 46th prospect in the country. 610 Sompto Cyril of just a massive 252 pounds, just a man child around the basket, patrols the paint. Uh, his per 40 minute numbers at overtime elite 18 points over 18 rebounds and six and a half blocks. So he only played about, you know, played about 20 minutes and was at nine, nine and, and 3.3 on the blocks. Um, but you know, a shot made it two out of every three of his field goal attempts because he gets a lot of dunks and he uses that big frame to seal defenders, pin them. Then he releases catches and then it's, he's at the rim and dare, dares folks to challenge him there, but a big physical guy. I think both of those players from overtime elite in Atlanta, Arkansas, I think, is in great shape with both of those. Jaden Quaintance, a 6'9 forward. Uh, you, you talk about versatility. Reminds me old school of Sean Kemp, an NBA All-Pro back in the 80s and 90s uh, but, and, and a McDonald's All-American 1988. But Jaden uh, Jaden Quaintance, only 16 years old in the McDonald's All-American game. And then last night in the Hunt Nike Hoop Summit game, played in both of those events. Only missed one field goal combined in those two games. A, a volume rebound, 11 rebounds in limit, limited minutes when you look at his totals in those two All-Star games. But 16 years old, uh, Jacob, that means where, whatever college he goes to, and he has, by the way, requested his release from his national letter of intent from Kentucky. Whichever school, now he's rated top 10 by everybody. Number eight, when you look at the composite national five-star. But wherever school he goes, he's got two years of seasons ahead of him before he'll be eligible for the NBA draft. That would be huge for Arkansas. Again, another player I think Arkansas could be in play for here. Boogie Fland, a 6'2 guard from back east, New York. Uh, just a, a, a prolific score facilitator as a point guard. Some of his game reminds me of Kyrie Irving. Yeah, I'm, full, I'm just throwing out Hall of Fame names today to compare some of these players. But another top 15 national guy that's that signed with Kentucky – uh, he has not made any request as, as, to this point from a from a release for a release from his letter of intent. We'll keep an eye on that. Billy Richmond, a six, six but another McDonald's All American and Nike Hoop Summit guy. When we're talking about Flan, and I was so impressed with his ability to score and set guys up and get steals. Really, kind of uh, uh, sneaky on that defensive end and playing passing lanes and 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 reaching in and poaching from guys blind sides. Uh, but Billy Richmond, a 6'6", another explosive wing, top 40 player. His dad played for, for Calipari when he was head coach at Memphis. Uh, he's another player that could be in the mix in that six-player recruiting class, again, top 40. And, and then Travis Perry, a 6'1 guard, who's from the state of Kentucky, uh, Mr. Basketball in that state, 6'1 guard, uh, prolific score, and another guy. We'll see if he's a guy that would be in play. I'm not sure about him. But I think at least five of those guys, maybe all six, could be in play. And then you've got three players in the transfer portal for Kentucky, including the big man, played only 15 games from Croatia, Big Z. Big Z. Zivonimir, Zivonimir Ivicic. I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, but a 7-2 forward, made his debut in SEC play against Georgia, knocked down, had three triples in that game, uh, three blocks and 13 points, but had five games of scoring in double digits. Only played in 15, career high 18 points to go with four blocks and five rebounds and a big home win over Alabama. We know the Crimson Tide ended up making it to the final four this year. So this is a very intriguing prospect. Can stretch the floor a little bit. Only took 16 threes, but made 37.5% of those. Um, but 50, over 57% field goal shooting, uh, nearly 80, over 70%, excuse me, and I think high 70, 77% maybe free throw shooters. So keep an eye on Big Z. I think he's a guy who could be in play. A couple other guys on the portal for Kentucky, uh, Adu Thero, a 6'8 six, 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 excuse me, a six eight wing who was a sophomore, and then another five star from the previous class, a number former number one rated player in the twenty twenty three class, who was a freshman last year, Aaron Bradshaw, seven one forward center, had fifteen points and five rebounds in Kentucky's home win over Arkansas in, in March. And so those are just some names in the portal. Some of the recruits, I went through a lot of it. We know Arkansas has got some guys hanging out in the portal. Keep an eye on Layden Blocker, Debo Davis, Jermon Mark, Caleb Battle. I'm not suggesting there'll be guys that will be back at Arkansas, but I wouldn't take your eyes off all of those names just yet. 
especially when you've got 13 to go. Uh, that's a that's a big lift. And then our, it, it's, and, and, and the time that Kelly's already, Calipari's already been in Arkansas, the Hogs reached out to at least one transfer portal player that we know of, Dre Davis. Big, strong 6'6", combo forward out of Seton Hall. 16 points a game, nearly six rebounds per game, and averaged over a block shot per game. Efficient three-point shooter. Good free throw shooter, good good from the field. Uh, so he's another name to keep an eye on. A host of schools have reached out to him, including Arkansas. Uh, I think it was came out the day after Calipari was officially announced as head coach. Uh, but just running up and down that list, like if you can already see potential for Calipari not only to strike to fill a roster, we thought coming into the weekend we might hear some of these names come off. Calipari was out of town. Uh, he was in, in in Los Angeles at the Wooden Awards, getting get, not only being recognized, uh, but he put a tweet out talking about how, how he was pulling double duty out there, not only being there for that, but recruiting and doing interviews and other things. Uh, some of the staff stuff's going to uh, shake out. I've already reported on some of those names that he's expected to bring with him from Kentucky. Kenny Payne, his longtime assistant as a Wildcat head coach, uh, who was just recently the Louisville head coach for a couple of seasons before being let go, could be back in the mix. We'll see what happens with Ronnie Burr Jr., who is still back in Fayetteville for now. Uh, well, off last year's staff and big part of Arkansas's recruiting efforts. A lot of names, a lot of things going on, not just in the recruiting part, but the staff end of it. But the big name is John Calipari, Hall of Famer, Naismith Hall of Famer, now picking up a lifetime award from Wooden uh, just uh, you know, over the last few days. I'm still in shock myself. I still wonder, am I saying this correctly? John Calipari, head coach of the Arkansas Razorback men's basketball program. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to get used to for a while saying John Calipari is the head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks. Kevin, I know you were in that press conference as well, seeing him in red, seeing him in the Arkansas Razorback red, and that quarter zip was odd as well. But honestly, it's going to be interesting, right, to see how he balances the, he's always been known for his freshman recruiting, but in a world where Purdue and UConn just played in the National National championship and only one five star was on each of the rosters it's going to be interesting to see how he balances transfer portal and freshman recruiting you got to do a little bit of both right to be successful in this college basketball landscape yeah that's I, I think that's right and he's you know Antonio Reeves Olivier Saar a few years ago yeah Trey Mitchell this past year I mean he's he's pulled some guys in out of the portal obviously he you know he's had some uh you know he, he's he's had some I guess you would say ups and downs and speed speed bumps acclimating to the way it is now. But again, as good as he's been as a coach, I mean, let's remember six final fours, three stops in college basketball, all per each of those three stops he took to final fours, a national title, two national title games, a ton of conference championships, postseason conference tournament championships, national coach of the year three times. Yeah, the postseason hasn't been as good as for Kentucky in the last handful of years. But they've been really good in the in the regular season for the most part, recruiting at a high level, and it, it, it and I don't think this is a guy that has that is just taking this next step to fade off in the sunset and kind of go out on his own terms, cash in a nice paycheck, and if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I think he's coming in here hungry. He convinced me that, uh, and he he does. I mean, he's smooth. You know, he's got swagger, and there's not a there's not a scenario in front of media or in front of the hit spotlight. That, he, that he's going to back down from. He comes across strong, right? Uh, but having said that, I believe him when he says, look, I'm here to win a championship, and I think I'm in a place where I can do it. I don't think he makes this move for any other reason, Jacob. I mean, we could talk about maybe things soured at Kentucky. 15 years, not a great relationship with the athletic director. Some of the fans, you know, start to have question marks. Put all that aside. Put all that aside. I don't think this move happens because he held the leverage. Huge buyout for the university, over $33 million. He didn't have one. Uh, so he, he didn't have to walk away. They weren't walking away from him. And so I think this was an alpha move on his part to say, I've got another run in me and I've got another stop that I'm going to help elevate. Look, as good as Eric Melsman was, Arkansas still looking for their first final four now in over 30 years. Got to go back to the Nolan era. He and Eddie Sutton both did it. Uh, Sutton once Nolan three times with that national championship for the hall of famer, Nolan Richardson, but two Nate Smith hall of fame coaches and Eddie Sutton, Nolan Richardson, Make it three at Arkansas now, Jacob, with John Calipari. Say it with me one more time. We, John Calipari is the head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks men's basketball program. Everybody else is just jealous.
it's unbelievable it truly is it's not something i don't think anybody's going to get used to and it's going to be a whole other adjustment period when we see him on the sidelines right roaming back and forth in bud wall oh. arena it's certainly going to be weird but hey wrapping up before we go i know you've got some pro hog stuff you want to hit playoff push ramping up and a couple hogs playing big roles in the nba ranks yeah i mean you've got the like you said this is the the regular season finale today and I'm going to start with Jordan Walsh making his first NBA start today for the Boston Celtics. He already had it wrapped up, the best record in the league, number one seed in the Eastern Conference. But 17 minutes, he scored a single point, but three rebounds, two steals, an assist. Box score plus 10 in his 17 minutes. 10-point win at home for the Celtics uh, over the Washington Wizards. Nick Smith Jr. with the Charlotte Hornets, another rookie, first-round draft pick. Career high today, Charlotte goes on the road and beats a good Cleveland team with some of its starters playing today but a 10 point win nick i mentioned the career high 33 minutes uh 24 points uh nine of 20 from the field including six a career high six made three pointers six of 11 from distance he finishes the regular season 63 of 146 from three that's 43.2 percent if he was qualified based on number of games played the attempts are high enough that would put him at sixth or seventh finishing in the nba in three point percentage on the season but 20 Four points, six rebounds, three assists, one steal, a box score plus nine in those 33 minutes. I mentioned the career high 24 points. It was also a game high, uh, but the Hornets go on the road and get a 120 to 110 win over the Cleveland Cavaliers. Bobby Portis finishes the regular season with his 17th double to double to double double today in the starting lineup for Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak who's injured. Uh, we'll see how available he is in the playoffs, but. Depending upon what New York does in overtime against Chicago, I had to turn away from that to come on here. Milwaukee will be either the number two seed or the three seed. If the Knicks win, Milwaukee would be the three seed in the East. But Portis was 17 points, 10 rebounds. Again, it was his 17th double-double of the season. He had a couple of blocks, a couple of steals and assists. And the Bucks lost on the road against the Orlando Magic. And Anthony Black, who snuck in there in the last few minutes of the game, and I think had five points and hit a three. Good rookie season for Anthony Black. In the opportunities given, he started a few games earlier in the year, uh, had some big performances. I think his career high was 24 points, sim- same as Nick Smith Jr. We know A.B. went sixth overall in the last draft in that lottery. Uh, Ricky Council IV just got bumped up from a two-way contract by the 76ers. He's been put on a four-year deal worth nearly eight, over set between 7 and $8 million a year. It's commensurate with a rookie deal that you would see for a lot of players going in the second round. He was a guy that went undrafted. Uh, the Sixers immediately signed him to a two-way deal. And when this guy's been given opportunities, he has been a volume scorer and a per-minute whiz in his volume scoring. With what, what limited opportunities he's getting, he's helped that team. They've been through a lot of injuries the Sixers have this year. It's a playoff team. Uh, but but great to see Ricky Council. And he did get some run today in the season finale, hit a three, and, is, and a, got a couple of rebounds in there. I think in in four or five minutes of playing time, Uh, but we just go up and down the list. Patrick Beverly will be on that mill is on that Milwaukee team Uh, has started last several games for the bucks and had some really good games, had a 20 point, 10 rebound, double, double, just a few games ago. Uh, We talk about Isaiah Joe and Jalen Williams, Oklahoma city's playing right now. If the thunder win today at home against the Mavs, the thunder finished no worse than a three-way tie for the top spot. In the Western Conference, along with defending NBA champion Denver Nuggets and the Minnesota Timberwolves, I've got to go back and look at the breakdowns. But Thunder, it, I think in a three-way tie, hold all the tiebreakers and would be the one seed. I think it, head-to-head against Denver, they hold the, the tiebreaker uh, in that and would be the one seed. If it comes down to OKC and Minnesota, I'm not sure who holds the tiebreaker on that one. It might be the Timberwolves, but – Going into it, you got a three-way tie, and, and, and by all those teams are tipping off in the Western Conference today, just tipped off about 25 minutes ago. So keeping an eye on all of that, I'm leaving some guys out. Daniel Gafford with the Mavs, I don't know if he'll play today. I think the Mavs might sit some guys, but what a season he's had. A breakout year in year five, had it was having great numbers for a bad Washington team, was traded to Dallas, has been nothing but really good there, and has been a regular starter for the most part over there. And putting up, I mean, he – He's a guy that came within, a, a think, a, a, fill, a made field goal or two, consecutive made field goal of Tom Wilt Chamberlain's all-time record for consecutive made field goals. And he recently had another streak of, of like 22 in a row. I mean, he's just been insanely good protecting the rim, is, leads the NBA in field goal percentage. I keep going on and on about these pro hogs 
Jacob, because they're really good and they all have are having impacts on teams, and several of those are going to factor in the playoffs. We keep an eye on them. Yeah, and I think that's the key point, as we've talked about before. It's not just, man, a couple of guys are getting a little bit of run here and there, oh, bouncing up and down from the G League, but you've got guys making serious impacts on not only playoff teams, but playoff contenders, and that's pretty wonderful to see. And, hey, it gives uh, Arkansas fans a reason to, to tune into the NBA playoffs, which is always great. Can you believe well. I left out Moses Moody, yeah, who they- also – He's factoring in in rotation minutes. It's been up and down for him, but he is a solid defender, a really good player who understands in only year three and one of the younger third-year players in the league and a previous lottery pick, Arkansas's first ever one and done. He's also had a quietly good season when turned to and typically has one of those positive box score plus positives for the team on a team with a, loaded down with Hall of Famers and veterans in that backcourt. It's been hard for him to work his way into that top rotation because of that. It'd be interesting to see how all those guys factor into the NBA playoffs coming up. Great to see the Pro Hogs continuing to succeed. That's going to do it for this week's Hog Hoops Report. For Kevin McPherson, I'm Jacob Morris. We'll talk to you next week. More Pig Trail Show on the other side of the break.